It's time to review Doom Patrol. And this week's episode, Dad Patrol, was pretty good. It was kind of a table setting episode. I'm excited for a lot that's going to happen next week. So before I get into my specific thoughts with spoilers, if you're interested in seeing future reviews on this channel of Doom Patrol and other shows, please consider subscribing so you don't miss a thing. And if you'd give me a like, I'd really appreciate it. So let's talk about Dad Patrol, which is kind of funny because I feel like pretty much every week could have been called Dad Patrol because there's just been a lot of stuff to do with dads this season. Obviously, Niles and Dorothy being the key father-daughter relationship. And last week, Niles kind of implied that he was going to protect the world from Dorothy by turning her over to Kipling. Now, whether or not Kipling was going to kill her was left kind of ambiguous, but that's kind of what I think most of us inferred from that. So this week, it kind of seems as though Niles is kind of cold-heartedly having this last kind of right with his daughter where he goes around with her at this carnival and just has this final day with her. And, you know, this could have been done better. I think it was kind of, uh, there was definitely a lot of tension, but I felt like Timothy Dalton's performance was very good, but they weren't really giving him a lot to work with as an actor. I feel that this situation should be a lot more dramatic than they're making it because basically all he does is every once in a while he'll give like a little glance like oh I'm so sad that my daughter is about to die but that's really it they really didn't work into the script a lot of opportunities for him to convey how much torment he's in and you would think he would be in quite a bit depending on what's going to happen to Dorothy after Niles turns her over to Kipling. Uh, the candle maker showed up briefly this week but next week i'm looking forward to seeing him unleashed entirely on the carnival which seems to be what's going to happen and the group will all get together and try to stop him uh, so we'll see how this goes down i think it's a little bit of a similar formula that we saw last season with mr nobody and boy do i miss mr nobody i feel like the candle maker is definitely intimidating definitely frightening but I don't think he has the panache and the level of interest that Mr. Nobody brought to this show. So I feel like there really has been an element lacking this season. I missed the fourth wall breaking. And of course, I enjoyed the scenes with the Candlemaker. I think the special effects are well done. It did seem like they had the shot of it coming out of the fire cribbed from last week's episode it seemed as though they reused the special effects which i can understand because i'm sure they're not cheap but it, it did stand out to me as a moment where i'm like he stepped out of the fire exactly the same way last week i'm pretty sure they just reused the special effects and thought we wouldn't notice this week i think the second most interesting duo was and this wasn't much of a duo, it was mainly uh, focused on one character, but it was Jane and Larry. We got to see Larry grappling a little bit with his failures as a father, but after last week's denouement that he was going to go and confront his family, it's kind of taking him a while to actually get to that point, and I feel like it's probably just going to happen at the end of the season where he'll show up again uh, at the last moment after all of the events of the finale have kind of finished off and it'll be just kind of an epilogue. That's my theory about how that will go down. But he goes off with Jane who is trying to retrieve this doll that Kay, the little girl who the personalities all inhabit, uh, who she left behind when she was put in a well by her father. And obviously we knew that Jane and the rest of the personalities had manifested after Kay went through this abuse from her father. And it's always hard to portray abuse on television, but I feel like the way that this was portrayed was a little bit cartoonish, and I feel like it kind of diluted the impact because it wasn't very done in a relatable way. It just felt as it felt ham fisted and kind of like, well, look at this. This is really mean. And then putting her down in a well, that just, mm, 
I am sure that this is done for the point of having the well in the underground and so that they can have all this all these metaphors and such but really i i just don't find it very believable not that this show is intended to be believable but within the world that this show inhabits it at most times tries uh, and this is supposed to be a more serious plot line so i would have expected more believability there but the big twist in Jane's plot line is right when she thinks she's come to understand Miranda, right when she thinks that she is going to toe the line because she realizes what Miranda has done for Kay, Miranda shoves her into the well in the underground, which means, she, lo and behold, the personalities that Miranda said had moved on have actually been shoved into the well, and her idea of moving on is basically death apparently. Now I don't think this plot line has a lot of stakes because nothing in the underground has a lot of stakes. It's all too abstract. So a power struggle for control of K, it just it just doesn't do much for me. I think that there have been times where I thought that this was interesting, but I always felt like it was interesting when we got to see it acted out in real life like when we got to see the different personalities manifest themselves and we got to see uh jane you know essentially retreating into herself i felt like that was the appeal of the underground having a power struggle actually taking place in the underground just doesn't seem that interesting to me and maybe i'm wrong maybe some of you find this interesting but what even happens if jane drowns in the well does she die We've already kind of implied in this show that that wouldn't be the case, that personalities disappear and reappear without any particular reason. So this just doesn't seem like a particularly shocking or interesting development to me, since it was pretty obvious from the moment Miranda showed up that she was an evil personality. And I think that with the theme they're ultimately going for is they're trying to show that Miranda can't tolerate the flawed personalities and so she's killing them off. Uh, whereas the difference is that Jane wants to pr protect every side of herself because she understands that they all exist for a reason. So I definitely saw this coming. I think most of us did, but it was a nice reversal in the way that it happened because I wasn't quite prepared for it to happen so quickly and abruptly. So it was definitely one of the one of Doom Patrol's very, very typical reversals. Uh, this week, Cliff got to bond with his pregnant daughter, who it turns out is about to get married to her uh, girlfriend. And, you know, it was kind of funny getting to see Cliff interact with her. His exuberance at different moments was just really charming. Cliff is and remain, is and has always been my favorite character. And this week he gets to do a lot of reacting but it was kind of a smaltzy episode for him i think that this show is at its best when the characters are suffering and not getting what they want and he got a lot of what he wanted this week uh, he got even got invited to the wedding and even though you know some of his behavior may have kind of confused uh his daughter it seemed as though he was winning her over now she did ask about niles when she showed up which kind of seems to indicate she might not be there for the reason that we think. She might have some ulterior motive, and that would be, I'm sure, very, very crushing for Cliff if that ever came out. Uh, this week, we also got to see um, a team up between Cyborg and Rita Farr, and I have to admit, this was probably the weakest part of the episode for me personally, because they had a scene where they tried to replicate the charm of the Steel and Stone uh, you know, parody TV series in a previous episode, but this time they were parodying the Avengers. But this one made the mistake of thinking that parody in itself is funny without really having any humor or any gags to you know, actually deliver the laughs. Like it was a well done parody, but there wasn't really any humor to it. So for me, it kind of fell flat. Uh, we did find out, however, that Ronnie has healed herself using, I'm going to call it scant juice because I don't know the technical term that she stole last week, but 
after healing herself, she went and killed someone, uh, getting revenge on the people who put her in the position that she's cur currently in. And of course, this leads to a confrontation between her and Cyborg, who has the sense of justice where he can't just let her go. And this was pretty weak stuff. I, Cyborg is and continues to be a pretty weak actor. And this whole scene played out in such a, this isn't the final confrontation fashion. Like you could tell that this was just a scene where they were establishing briefly what the characters are gonna do next. And then not, it wasn't gonna be the culmination of this. So, you know, it was okay, but it wasn't like super thrilling. And it was really dumb because Cyborg is seriously underpowered in this show and he gets thrown through a table, punched a few times, and basically incapacitated by that. And then he lets Roni leave. So overall, I wasn't terribly impressed to say the least. So overall, I liked this episode. I'm really interested to see where it goes. It had a lot of chilling moments in particular with the candle maker and Dorothy as she reaches maturity, uh, something that Niles was oblivious to. And you have to wonder why this is happening now and also why her mother and her mother's people created the candle maker. So this is probably going to all play out in some interesting and unexpected ways. I'm looking forward to that next week. But what did you think? Let me know in the comments. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this one, please consider subscribing. And as always, you can watch more videos right now.